Have you got a regular old desktop PC and want to play some games on it? Well, it's probably limited by not having a graphics card in it, so it's only got integrated graphics. And these iGPUs stink at playing games. Sure, they'll play some basic games like Minecraft or Roblox, or maybe a lighter or older indie game. But if you want to play some heavy games, you're gonna need to upgrade. So today we're gonna find out whether it's worth it to shove a GPU in here, or whether you should just buy a new PC. Let's start by looking what this thing can handle in its current barebone state. I found this old HP Pro Desk on Marketplace for around 100 bucks. And with a 7th gen i5 and 8GB of RAM, it's not too bad. Sure, it's not a beast, but it's got 4 cores and the space for upgradability. Not a whole lot of space though. Unfortunately, you can't fit a full-size GPU in here even if you tried, which I did. Okay, I've never even started this thing up before, so let's do that first and see what we'll find. I mean, at least it has windows on it. And look at that. Even Wi-Fi, wow. Oh. Uh oh Let's start by just connecting it to the Wi-Fi and letting Windows updates do its thing. In Windows 11, Windows Update is pretty smart most of the time and knows what your PC needs. So if you're missing any drivers, it installs them for you. Okay, now that we've done that, let's see how fast this thing is without changing anything to it. 3 dmark Time Spy is a great free benchmark to see how fast a PC is graphically. And you can easily compare scores to other PCs to see how yours is doing. And this PC with just its iGPU is obviously doing very bad iGPUs are not powerful. Their main task is to drive a display or two and not heavy 3D workloads. There are way faster iGPUs these days, mostly in AMD processors, but Intel CPUs are still shit out of luck. So what games can we run on this thing? Well, Minecraft is a great game that doesn't really need a dedicated GPU. It basically runs on a potato and is only really CPU intensive. We could make it a lot more graphically intensive by installing shaders, but I don't think Optifine even allows me to use them. They straight up don't work on an iGPU. When it comes to 2D indie games, it obviously has no issues running on this thing, since they're not graphically intensive at all. But older 3D games, and I'm talking old old, do run on it as well. Counter-Strike 1.6 is a great example of this, so if you like any older games, you're not going to have any issues with it. And finally, I wanted to try to run Battlefield 1. It is an older game by now, but it's still incredibly pretty. But surprise surprise, a bunch of issues came up and I couldn't even try to launch the game. So conclusion, with just an iGPU, you can definitely play older 2D and even 3D games, since they're not very graphically intensive. But any game after roughly 2013, and things are looking a bit rough. Now let's shove a GPU in here and see how things change. Now you can't just throw any GPU in here. Compatibility really depends on what kind of PC you have. For example, in previous videos, I could easily throw a powerful GPU into Lenovo or Dell PCs with a couple of upgrades on the side. But on this HP desktop, any GPU that's a little too long won't fit because it's being blocked by this 24 pin connector on the motherboard. So I chose this little guy, the AMD Radeon RX 550. It is not very impressive, but it's only like 50 bucks, is very small and requires no external power. And for 50 bucks, that really is not a very expensive upgrade. And maybe it'll actually fit on this motherboard. So let's open her up, unscrew a few screws, shove it in and... Shit, it's still too big. That's okay. I am so sorry for doing this. But guess what? She fits. And here's the reason why I chose this GPU. It doesn't require any extra power from the power supply. So even the shittiest OEM power supply from HP or Dell can handle this little guy. And after closing everything back up neatly again, let's see what's changed. Haha! Hi! Stop it! Oh! Okay, it works. 
But now that we've got a new GPU in our system, we need to install some AMD graphics drivers. And after that, she's all ready. Let's test this thing and compare it to how it ran before. First, let's run 3 d Mark Times by to get a bit of a picture of how much better it is now. It is more than three times faster. I expected a little more, but this is still leagues better than before. Now let's try some real games. Let's start with all reliable, Minecraft. And damn, look at that performance. We were getting like 30 to 40 FPS before, and now it's almost triple that. This actually makes the game downright playable. And now we can actually use shaders. And by God, what a difference does this make in terms of looks. The RX 550 isn't super powerful or anything, so it doesn't run at a high FPS. But 30 FPS with these looks is damn impressive in my eyes. So great success! Now let's try CS 1.6 again. Okay, it plays the exact same. I'm pretty sure this game has been capped at 100 FPS, but it does stay a bit more stable around that 100 number now. Alright, on to the real test. Battlefield 1. Getting past the starting screen is already pretty promising. Let's just set everything to low for now, and let's hope for the best. Battlefield 1 ran downright playable. It was a very enjoyable experience. It did dip into the low 40s when stuff got really busy, which is pretty understandable since the RX 550 isn't an amazing card or anything. But compared to not playing it at all, I'd pick this every day of the week. So that was pretty damn good, right? I must say the RX 550 is a bit of a lackluster card for this video. I mean, it's got two gigabytes of VRAM and is slower than some modern laptop iGPUs. But even with such a mediocre card, we made this weak desktop PC into a relatively fast gaming PC. With Minecraft, we made it quite a bit more bearable and a lot prettier, with it even being able to handle shaders. Performance didn't change much in CS 1.6, but that's probably because the game is a bit janky and old. But Battlefield 1 was actually playable. And with a GPU, you're now able to play a lot of games. I mean, there's legendary older 3D titles like Far Cry 3, Assassin's Creed, or older Call of Duty and Battlefield games. And those should run perfectly fine on this thing. There is an RTX 3050 with the same size as this card, so I would really recommend trying to get that one. And there's also a third option, a complete case swap with a way more powerful GPU. I did a couple of videos like this, and it does cost a little more money, but it allows you to play basically every game you can think of. So you can check out those videos if you're thinking of going the extra mile. As for just throwing a GPU into an old PC, I'd say this was pretty successful. It's cheap, relatively easy, and gives you a very big performance boost. So if you've got little money to spend for an upgrade, I would really recommend doing this. Now let me give a huge shout out to my YouTube members. Soundwife, Thomas, Inky, Mr. Frosty Dude, Dropzone One, Martijn Snijkers, Flimsy, Aki, Disco Volante, Daniel, Mr. Nuke, Sebastian, Christian Sands, Real Elf, Toasted, Eric the Rat, Wesley Rhodes, Michael, Ghost Data, Anugadar, Abdullah, Ravi, and Mate? Mate? Betse? Mate? Peace? <laughs> if you become a YouTube member, you get early access to content of mine, a shout out at the end of every video, and you'll also be supporting me as a creator to make these videos. And of course, you'll also be part of the Cool Guys Club. So you can use cool emojis like these in the comment section. So join the club if you're interested. And I will see you all in the next video. <laughs> bye bye. Do you get to the cloud district very often? Oh, what am I saying? Of course you don't.